Good morning, everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to live q and I normally do these Mondays, but this is a slightly odd week for us as we get back to normality. So I'm doing a Q&A today. Actually, it's going to be we're going to have a bunch of odd weeks, but that's just how the winter season goes or the fall slash winter season. But hey, I'm here to answer your questions. If you have questions and things you want to ask, go ahead, and ask them in the comments and I may may answer them and we'll just hang out together when i'm done with this we'll end this around 9 30 it's 8 30 right now when i'm done with this we'll take a short break and then we're going to be back here playing the new world of warcraft wrath of the lich king a game based on a pandemic system live we've already played this one we'll be reviewing it later this week but we figured we'd play some we do a little bit more live stuff this week to make up for the lack of live stuff from last week and then later today we'll be doing crowd surfing so hopefully you enjoy that so good morning, everybody. So uh, let's see here. Looking for questions. The biggest wow factor for me at Gen Con was just that people were there. Lots of people were there. I was surprised. I was expecting fewer folks there. Do you go back and read all the notes people sent you after you finished filming the unboxings? Sure. I quickly take them out of the unboxing because the notes for me, not for the people watching the unboxing. But I always read the notes because I'm curious what they say, obviously. It's not, I don't just throw the note away. In fact, people always, sometimes people say, I think there might have been something else in a box. We always look carefully at everything in a box before we recycle them. How many times in your life did you finish a game of Monopoly? A lot, I suppose. I played Monopoly a lot when I was a kid. I'm not the best one to talk about button shy games. I love Sprawlopolis and a few others, but I haven't played tons of them to have that knowledge. Do you play games with Dice Tower fans through meetups or anything? Oh, we definitely play games here. And I mean, if someone's ever coming to Miami area, you know, email me. Maybe you have a chance to get in one of our meetups. If you live in Miami area, definitely email me and come to our, our, you know, meetups that we're doing. Um, and I and I would just email people and let them know when we're playing games. Thanks. Let's see here. What will your chosen grandpa name be, or do you not care? I don't know. I think I will be grandfather. I know it sounds all oh, sir, but my most of my children call me father. And my, my second oldest daughter started it as I don't know why she started it. And now multiple of my children say father. So I guess if they're going to call me father, then I should be grandfather. What kind of things can we be looking for in the Autumn Spectacular? That's a good question. But before I answer that, you reminded me that we have a contest. So let me pull up the contest here. Badam badam bam bam ba bam badam ba da 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 can do can do alrighty today's contest today is oh it's a, there's no Q and A today alrighty well we're gonna make one up anyway so we'll do this is for uh, and I'll just I'll just put something in here I'm gonna. I'll fix this. All right, so to, to enter this contest, you simply need to email me at contest at dicetower.com. We'll pick a random winner to win a $10 gift certificate to Game Nerds. Game Nerds is our sponsor, and in fact, I just recorded a video from them talking about their best-selling games from August, which will go up next week. Uh, but they have tons of great games at fantastic prices, so check them out. Even if you don't win a $10 gift certificate, you're saving that much money or more by shopping there, so I highly, highly recommend them. But if you want to enter this contest, just email me at contest at dicetower.com. In the subject line, put the word Gen Con, that's two words, G-E-N space C-O-N, and tell me what your favorite game is that you're looking forward to getting this Christmas. So we'll talk about that. Thank you to Game Nerds for sponsoring this, and good luck. But uh, Autumn Spectacular, that you reminded me because we have contests in the Autumn Spectacular. So the Autumn Spectacular is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be only three days, October 4th, 5th, and 6th, but we're going to do it longer for each of those periods. And we're going to have special guests. I'll announce one of them right now. Sam Healy will be here. 
um, with us for the Autumn Spectacular. So he'll be coming in. He'll be showing off a couple Mythic games. And that's not all. We'll talk about more as time goes by, but I already have the whole schedule done for Autumn Spectacular. Lots of cool games. You saw some of them in the unboxing yesterday where I mentioned, hey, we're playing this in the Autumn Spectacular. I have all, all the games in the closet right over here. It's going to be a fantastic fun time, so we hope you come join us live. And of course, it will still be available if you can't make it live and watch it later. Let's see here. When will Autumn Spectacular be? October 4th, 5th, and 6th. Did I see the new The Batman trailer? I did not. Um, uh, I'll watch it later. I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna keep doing live trailer things on here. How's your experience as a math teacher helped me in teaching board games? It has nothing to do with being a math teacher. I think that if someone's a teacher, they're likely better at teaching games than not. I'm not saying I'm a great teacher of games, but likely you're better because you teach all the time. So hopefully you can then teach a board game. Some people are asking things here about like. What's my favorite games to play at a con? We've done a top 10 list on that. What games have we played more than 100 times? We've done a top 10 most played games. So keep, it, keep an eye out for that sort of thing. Is the top 10 book nearby? Oh, alrighty. Today. <laughs> I'm not doing this one. My top 10 examples of why aliens exist. My top 10 coffee shops. I don't like that. Alright, what's over here? My top 10 things about college. Okay. So my top 10 things, thinking back in the college. So some of this is not going to apply to everyone. It was just applied to me. So I'll say lack of stress. And you say, what? All kinds of stress at college. Not compared to post-college. I mean, I think about all the different things I've been thinking about now. In college, I worried about classes and money for college or for other things. That was it. Maybe relationships and stuff like that, but top 10 was just a lack of stress. And in that, copious amounts of free time. Yes, I get it. You need to study, 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 study. But I had a lot of free time in college. You know, every weekend I was like, what are we doing this weekend? What are we doing here? Um, top 10 things about college teaches you the value of hard work. I worked my way through college. I almost wish everyone had to. Even if I had the money to pay for my kids to go through college, and I don't, but even if I did, I would make them work in college. It's important, I think, to be able to work and to um, study at the same time, to learn to balance those things. Top 10 things from college, I met some of my greatest friends there. Now, I met hundreds of friends. Very few of them have become lifelong friends, but I have a few. Matt Hosey, Sam Healy I met in college, and others I've met in college. And even now, I'll run across people from years ago from college, and it's like, oh yeah, I remember that. Um, top 10 things about college. Well, number one, by the way, my wife. I met my wife at college. Nothing compares to that. I'll lose all those friends. I'll lose all my education, my degree, and a heartbeat to meet my wife again. My grandmother wife. Anyway, um, uh, let's see. Uh, I, I have some very uh, great teachers in college who helped focus me on different areas of my life that I was able to go to in college. That was fantastic. I went to college in Pensacola. I think Pensacola is a fantastic city, so that was a good part about going to college. Um, I got heavily in the gaming in the college. It was definitely collectible card gaming for the most part, but who cares? And got started down that route. I learned about the internet in college. I didn't have the internet before then. So I think it's about 10. Who made your marble run? Will they produce for others as well? I do not know if they'll produce for other people um, or not. Uh, but it is a fantastic marble track. Um, the, I'm sorry. Uh, my mind just went blank. It's, I know it's David Killing. Um, Woodfish Toys. Sorry, Woodfish Toys made it. And they do a fantastic job. I don't know why that name went out of my head there. 
Is Guys and Dolls your favorite musical? You seem to wear clothing that would fit in a production of it. Not really. I like a lot of the songs from Guys and Dolls. I think the story is okay. Um, you know, yeah, I, I, I'm assuming you're asking because I was just, I think I was just singing one earlier. Um, there's a lot of the music I like from Guys and Dolls. Uh, although, again, the music kind of gets thrown in there. Sit Down, You're Rocking the Boat, which is probably the most famous song from the, from the musical, is like thrown in at the very end for no reason at all. Um, but, no, it's not my favorite musical. I know that next question is, what is your favorite musicals? I've been asked that multiple times in the show, so I'll leave you to find an old Q&A for that. Um, but I like Guys and Dolls fine. I don't have any good way to sort out Funkoverse right now. Still working on that. It's actually not in the library. It's here in the studio, but not in the library. Did you see the production copy of Foundations of Rome at Gen Con? Looking good. Indeed, it looks fantastic. Did I see it? I did. Do I have it? I do. Will we play it live here on the channel? We will. Do I have it currently? No, it's still being shipped. But once it gets here, we'll at some point play it live on the channel to show you all the amazing production version of Foundations of Rome, which is humongous. With the new Star Wars Outer Rim expansion announcement, what mechanic improvement besides more variety in each deck would you like to see that could really improve the base game? I've still not played Star Wars Outer Rim. Was anyone else here completely underwhelmed with, in my opinion, the most boring Fantasy Flight in-flight report ever? Also, don't drop a mic on something like that. So at the end of the, the thing, they announced the uh, Star Wars Outer Rim real briefly, gave us no information on it, except we know Dengar's in it because he's undercover. It's not even the Mandalorian, which is what people want it, right? And then they literally dropped the mic. You don't get to drop a mic for doing an obvious announcement of an expansion for a late game. That's not a mic dropping moment. A mic dropping moment would be announcing something you know, that people would never expect. Like, we're doing Star Wars Twilight Imperium. That's a mic drop moment. We're doing a, a brand new whatever, whatever, great. But that, okay, well, uh, Fantasy Flight is what they are, but wow, I used to sit on the edge of my seat at Fantasy Flight in Flight Reports. I was actually, at Gen Con, I had a chance to talk to Christian Peterson. He was there uh, with a booth for Game Center, and I was, we were talking about how those, I, he said that when it first started, there was just a handful of people came to the first one. And I remember going to one of the earlier ones, and it was exciting. They were like, here's our new game. Look at this new game. Look at this new game. Look at this new game. And then they would go, look at this new game. And it's here at Gen Con right now. And I was like, what? It was super exciting. To the point where now they're dropping a mic because they announced an expansion for a game. Sad. Sad. Yes, I know I should play Star Wars Outer Rim. I'll get around to it. Do you ever go into a thrift store and see games you think of covering? Games few people would even remember, recognize. No, but that's not because I don't, that's not because I wouldn't do that. It's because for some reason, and I'm not sure why, thrift stores in Florida don't have board games. Or at least where I live. And I've checked all the thrift stores in the area. Occasionally I might see a board game. There's nothing here. I don't know that people just don't play board games in Florida or what the deal is. I mean, I go to my thrift store, and I, I have one around the corner from my house. I go there all the time. I look for clothing. I look for. I always look at the books. Um, sometimes my, my kids get toys there, but mostly clothing is, is why I go there. I always go look at the hats, ties, vests. <laughs> um, and my wife is like, no, we need to actually find clothes that matter. But I, I always go look where the games would be, and there's almost nothing there ever. It's weird. So who knows why? Have you ever been to Poland? Feel invited to come. Well, I would love to go to Poland. And maybe once all this craziness is over, I'll get a chance to come there. What 
What's the biggest difference in teaching mathematics in South Korea as opposed to Florida? Well, I teach it the exact same way. The biggest difference I found was in, in when I taught in South Korea, uh, I was teaching kids from soldiers on, on uh, American base, but I also taught diplomats kids, and I taught a lot of Korean kids uh, who spoke English. And I had a fairly nice bell curve with some very high-end students, and then good students, and then okay students, and then a few bad students. When I came back to America, that bell curve shifted dramatically. I had a few very good students, a few okay students, and a lot of bad students. Um, just a very different mindset. What's a tie design you don't have but wish you did? I would like to get some really cool ties that featured Tina's artwork on them. I want to get like a tie of that has just that background that we have for the Dice Tower. I probably could get it made. I just haven't done it. Is a, is a Gen Con with less new game announcements releases better or worse? Probably better. I think it's better to spread game announcements out over the year rather than have them all at one place. What's a good way to describe our hobby to someone outside the hobby, the Bobby, whose main reference point is Monopoly? Whenever I meet people and they ask me about board games, I say, listen, there are thousands of board games. You probably haven't heard of many of them because they're just not as well known, but they are fantastic. You've heard of Monopoly, you've heard of Scrabble, you've heard of Uno. I'll tell these people, but there are so many more games than that. I said it would just blow your mind to know how many games there are. There's games about every topic. Like, what's your favorite thing? I'll say to the person, and they'll say blah, 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 blah. And I'll say, there's a game about that, because there always is, or usually, you know. Um, and I'll say, these are just great games. You'll have to try it at some point. And then they'll say, what would you recommend? And then I'll think about that kind of person, who they are. And I might say, take it to ride. Or I usually say, take it to ride. Um, but I might say something else. I might say, no thanks. Or something simple and easy to play. There's likely the chance they're not that interested anyway. But I usually do that. You don't degenerate Monopoly and... Uh, denigrate, sorry. Monopoly and Uno and stuff. I don't sit there and go, these are bad games. That's not helpful. You just say those are you know, there's a, those are those are good games I play for my kid, but these games are are really cool. They do things you wouldn't believe. That's usually I leave people like hanging. This isn't a question, but just a heads up that the Dinosaur World playthrough freezes around 33 minutes. I know. Um, we don't know what happened because if you watched it live yesterday, you saw the whole thing, but YouTube messed it up somehow. Happily, we record everything, or at least our live stuff, in-house. So Roy is currently fixing it, um, re-uploading it, and once it's re-uploaded, it's going to take a while because it's a two-hour thing. Once it's re-uploaded, we'll delete the old one. So it's there. That does mean we lose the live chat, which I hate doing. I usually don't pull down live stuff because we like to keep the live chat intact, but you know, it is what it is. If you could have a board game collection consisting entirely of just one designer, ugh, I would not like that at all. I don't know that I could answer that. Um, maybe Ryan Lockett, Vlada Kavato, maybe. Ugh, I don't want a, a, a collection from just one designer. Do you keep a separate personal game library outside of Dice Towers? Just a few kids and family and party games at home. Not many. Mitch says, congrats on being a grandfather. Woo! Thanks. Yeah, that's true. FFG. Check out these new Legends of the Five Rings tote bags. Mic drop. It's, it just is embarrassing. It's, 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 uh, again, I don't mind. They, they could do their announcements and not be exciting, and that's the way life is. But don't drop a mic, like physically drop a mic. You're, it's, it's, it's the equivalent of being like, the most exciting game ever! We'll tell you if your game's exciting. You know, that sort of thing. With Mike and Roy joining the top 100 games of all time, in the 2021 version, will the Earworm jingle be updated. I don't know. Um, 
Brian, I mean, not Brian, I'm blah, 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 blah. Man, I'm really bad at remembering names today. Uh, but the guy who made the uh, music for us is very, very busy. So I don't, I mean, it's been years since he's made one for us. Is it possible to create one game course like a meal course, like a soup game, appetizer game, first main game, and go on to the dessert game? Sure, I guess. I just don't know why you would do that other than to say this exact phrase. Um, did you guys ever cover Picture Perfect? I heard you say it was great in last week's Q&A, but can't find any English language review of it. My review of Picture Perfect will go up this week. Let's see here. Have you played print and play games? Decades ago, I have played a couple. I didn't like them back then because they felt like a lot of work. Now, I definitely don't want to play them. They're a ton of work. I, it's just, it's so much work to print and play a game. It really is. And the whole time I'm playing it, I'm like, this. Oh, I don't like the components. I really don't. I'm glad they exist. That's fine. I'm not saying it's bad. I don't particularly find print and play games to be cheap anyway. Like, how much money do you save on a print and play game? Printer ink ain't cheap. All that time you spend on it, time is money. That's a lot of time. And you want to make it look nice, so you're going to use good materials. I just I just find that the, the amount of work and actual money to put into it, at the end of the day, can I just pay $35 and get a game from the store? Do you think this hobby is going to last far into the future? I wonder, given the fascination with computer phones, video games, etc. Yeah, I mean, if video games had destroyed board games, it would have happened. I mean, the more electronics grow, the more board gaming grows. So, I think we're fine. Eric Herman. Thank you, Dan. Eric Herman made all the stuff for the Dice Tower. He also does some great kids... Uh, music. He does a lot of great. You can search him on YouTube. Just fantastic stuff. Thank you, Dan. Dinosaur World seems to take up more space than Dinosaur Island. Yes. Was that the case? Yes. And which one do you prefer between the two? Well, you have to wait till I do that. I'm going to do a video about that. How long has this been going on? What's been going on? Do you mean this Q&A? 23 minutes. Is there anything you felt that was missing this year at Gen Con? Well, I mean, I would say um, there was a few restaurants we missed uh, <laughs> that were gone, but there are other restaurants. We went to a meatball restaurant, which was amazing. I didn't know such a thing existed. Mimi's Blue Meatballs. It was fantastic. We went to an ice cream place, Sub-Zero, which was tremendous. I know, I always talk about food at conventions, but it was good. Uh, la, 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 la. Sure, lots of publishers were missing. And then, by very extension, lots of friends were not there. So, that was missing. But I'll tell you what, I had a great time. What other content creators did you meet at Gen Con? Saw some pictures of you with Randy and Ellen. Randy and Ellen were not at Gen Con, they were at the Dice Tower Retreat. Oh, there was lots of content creators there. I ran into Jeremy Howard. I ran into the guys from Man vs. Meeple. I ran into Forrest Bauer. I saw... Um, now people are going to be annoyed because I didn't mention them, but uh, lots of them I ran into. I ran into lots of folks from the Dice Tower there. Is it a smart idea to play Machiko or Legacy before even playing the normal game? You can. It's really easy to get into. Have you seen Smash Up Knights of the Round Table? Uh, no, but I was told about it. I had a meeting with the AEG guys, and they were talking about that and upcoming stuff for Smash Up. Which I don't think I can talk about, actually. Um, who is your arch nemesis in the board game industry? Oh, that would be Stephen Bonacore. 
thin pizza or thick pizza. I don't necessarily hate thick pizza, but I love thin pizza. I really love thin pizza. I'm a New York guy over Chicago. Again, that doesn't mean Chicago's bad. I always find it weird when people are like, this is great, this is terrible. I think all pizza pretty much is good. But if I have my druthers, I have thin. Although a stuffed crust pizza is good. And why? Someone needs to tell me. Stuffed crust is so delicious. I love stuffed crust pizza. I love the stuffed crust. Why don't they just make stuffed crusts? Like, this is a bunch of stuffed crusts in a box. I would buy that. And you could say, well, that's what cheese sticks are. And it's not the same. Stuffed crusts. Just a, a package of stuffed crusts with some dipping sauce. Come on now. That would sell like hotcakes, I feel. At least I would buy them. Meatball restaurant, mind blown. Yeah, so what it was, they gave you a menu, and then you could pick like what meat you, you could, like they had a lot of different things in the menu, appetizers and stuff. But for the meatballs, you could get them as sliders in a bun, or you could just get them by themselves. So you get a four meatball plate, and they were decent meatballs, like this size, and you could pick what kind of meatballs you wanted. So they had beef and pork and turkey and, you know, the non meat stuff. Um, you could pick which one they had a special, which this this, this time was a, a pizza meatball. And then you pick the sauce. So like there was a honey sriracha sauce or just marinara sauce or there was a garlic cilantro sauce and things like that. So I got four meatballs with four different sauces on them and that was just, it was good. It was a good meal. What's the biggest difference you felt compared to Gen Con years past? Wearing masks, I think, was the biggest difference. <laughs> also, smaller, obviously. Shout out to Roy, says the schleppo. Hey, you were supposed to come by and say hi to me. Have you seen the new Dune film yet? Is it out? Did it come out this week? No, it's October 22nd. Why? Why would it? Yeah, October 22nd. Why would we? Why would I have seen it then? That seems weird. Um, let's see here. Isn't a stuffed crust without a slice a calzone? No, it's not the same thing. I'm talking about just the thin, like if you took a stuffed crust pizza, I'm talking about like the ones from Pizza Hut or whatever, where there's a piece of pizza and at the end is a stuffed crust. And you cut that stuffed crust off and it's, it's long and thin like a breadstick. Just make that and I'm happy. Oh, meatball sandwiches are amazing. Are you planning to attend the UK Games Expo again next year? I mean, again, I get, people keep asking, but I've made no plans for next year. Well, okay, that's that's not quite true. I'm going to be at Dice Tower East, Dice Tower West, the Dice Tower Cruise, and the Dice Tower Retreat. Those four conventions I'll be there, and I already paid for my Gen Con booth, so I think it's safe to say the Dice Tower will be at Gen Con next year. Other than that, who knows? Do you have a favorite hat? I do. Is my love for them the same for all of them? It is not. Dune is out in Europe already, hence the confusion. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. I can wait. I'm fine. I think it's amazingly great that you regularly support other smaller channels by having them on the Dice Tower. Thank you for that. Do you have any future plans for show crossovers? Yes! Doo -doo 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 -doo. You reviewed that Wonka game, but didn't go into the worst scene in the movie. Well, if you've seen Willy Wonka and the Chaka Factory, or Charlie and the Chaka Factory, I always forget which one's which, the 60s movie, that boat scene makes no sense, has nothing to do with the rest of the movie, and is in fact genuinely almost horror film material. It's just an odd sequence in that movie, makes no sense. I like that movie a lot. I like the songs in it, you know, from The Candyman, uh, Cheer Up Charlie, 
Um, from the Oopa Loopa songs, they're great. But um, the there's parts of the movie I'm not as big a fan of. The boat scene is the biggest one. I don't like that the end with Charlie, like not quite like said, like disobeying Willy Wonka because that was not in his character and didn't actually happen in the book. I thought that that was odd. I mean, it's fine. He apologized, so therefore, I just thought that was an odd change from the the movie it's, from the book itself. Favorite Dune game so far is Dune Imperium. It's not even close. I'm not sure how to react to this because we have restaurants that center around flat meatballs in buns. Yeah, well, the day a hamburger is a meatball. No, 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 no. Any secrets of playing games when I hurt my back? I would say iPad. That's what I would use. Will there be a Dice Tower cruise in the near future? Yeah, there's one scheduled for February. You can sign up for it now if you want. Best Gen Con booth, Dice Tower. Um, who had the best booth? Ravensburger's booth was really good looking. So I'm probably going to say Ravensburger. Let me think. They just had really good... It was big, it was colorful, it looked neat. There was like no spectacular booths this year. You Upper Deck used to come in and do really crazy things. Oh, Mondo had a really cool booth. Mondo had a, a printing press at their booth. And if you, if you bought a certain amount of stuff, they gave you a free um, print. Each day was a different one of, of Marvel characters. And so I have one uh, here at the studio. I'm going to hang it up, a Black Panther. That was really cool. But they did it on the spot. They vroom, vroom, run it through the rollers. It was really cool. So maybe Mondo, Ravensburger. Try to think else who had a uh, like anything cool at their booth. I think those would be the ones I would I would guess. Will you have pumpkin spice latte this fall? No! I don't like pumpkin spice that much. The book ends differently? Yeah, the book, well, they end very similar, except that in the book, at, at one point after Mike TV gets sucked into the TV or made small or whatever, you know, Willy Wonka says, let's go, everybody. And Charlie says, by the way, it's just me. And he's, what? You win. That was it. He's like, you win. You're the best. I knew it was going to be you. Yeah. And then they jump in a great glass elevator and shoot out of the building. And he's like, this is your factory. And it's exciting until you read the sequel, in which case the, the sequel, I think, is one of those clear cases of a book that is maybe one-fifth as good as the original book. The great glass elevator is not horrible. There's some funny moments in it. But there's just so much ridiculous. It, it, not that Charlie and the Chocolate Factory wasn't ridiculous, but Charlie and the Chocolate Factory attracted you because of the dream. When you read it, you were like, I could win a golden ticket. Me, I don't have a lot of money either, just like Charlie didn't. I could win a golden ticket. I could go to the Chocolate Factory. I'm good. I'm not like these evil Augustus Gloop and Veronica Salt. And I would be good and could win the Chocolate Factory. No one really says, I wish I could be in a great glass elevator that shoots up to the uh, International Space Station where aliens are eating people, and then I have to deal with the president um, of the United States, who's a complete moron, and his staff, and it's a, it's a really weird book. Uh, again, it's kind of funny, but it just has this, it has nothing to do with chocolate anymore. They barely talk about that. They do make people younger and older again. It's just an odd thing. Um, it's... It's just not as good of a book. I mean, I still read it, and I will probably read it again, but I don't know why I'm talking about this. But anyhow, uh, yeah, so the book ending is slightly different. Did you get any tooth removed? You can see I'm missing one here. I just, I, I got a tooth removed because it was killing me. And then they were like, here's your options for refilling it. And I was like, what? It's so expensive. And so I just never got it refilled. I will at some point. 
How's the laser engraver working? It's terrible. I hate it. It doesn't work. I, I downloaded the, I, I, I plugged it in, got it ready to go. And then they're like, okay, download this app. Okay, now hook your phone up with it. Nothing, it doesn't work. So I went and looked at the app. The app has tons of one-star reviews. They all say the same thing. Someone emailed me and said, you can actually plug it in your computer, but it's a, it's, it's, it's a USB. I have a Mac. I got to figure out, I got to use the USB to USB-C. I'm like, oh, so much work. I'm, I'm tired of all these. I'm, I'm done with technology on, 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 I'm done with technology on Kickstarter. I'm done with it. What do you think about the new Dominion expansion allies? I don't know much about it other than there's more cards coming. I like Dominion. I actually just played it at the Dice Tower Retreat. I pulled it out. We just played it. Had a lot of fun with the people I played it with, and it was good. Do you have a go-to spot for meatball sandwich where you live? Not really. We have a place here that makes a really good meatball uh, sandwich, I think. Although when I go there, I always get a, a hoagie because, come on now. Um, but my wife makes really good meatball sandwiches, so I don't know. I don't feel, feel the need to go anywhere. Will there be an Essen preview video? Maybe. I don't even know what's going to be at Essen. I mean, we got Gen. I mean, uh, Origins to get through first, so. Which was your favorite Ghostbuster character? Oh, that's interesting. I've always, I was always amused by Rick Moranis and everything he's in, so maybe his character. The Stargate portal booth was neat. Oh yeah, that's true. They had a big Stargate there. I forgot about that. I just didn't go look at that much because it wasn't board games. But you're right. That was a kind of a cool booth. This is too early for us lazy West Coasters. Yeah, I'm sorry. eBay had a huge booth. That's true. eBay had a really interesting booth where you could go. I was like, why is eBay here? But in the really rare magic cards, which was impressive, there was three black lotus cards there in the booth as well as it wasn't the entire power nine but there were several moxes there just rare cards all over the place i was like oh man i, I feel like i'm they were in glass cases there were security guards there you know it was neat to see that and then you could bid on those cards right then and there i did not and then if you got in line there they gave you like a free play mat and a magic card and pokemon card or something like that i didn't feel like getting in line i don't want that stuff that badly but it was kind of a neat thing. I, it just was an odd thing, right? Like, hey, you should use eBay. And I was thinking, I already knew that, but that was cool. If a third library existed, would you do a con in Europe? Maybe. It would be very expensive for us to all get over there. Is it wrong that I always thought Charlie was the worst kid and I liked the bad kids more? Yes, that's wrong. They were bad. This is odd to me that people want bad behavior rewarded. Augustus Gloop. So, ranking them in order of badness. Um, and, and, and when I rank these in order of badness, I'm, I'm ranking the parents. Because the parents were clearly... Probably, Veruca Salt was the worst. Because her dad just bought her the ticket, right? Money solves everything. A spoiled brat. Um, uh, then, uh, they were all just wicked kids. They were all jerks. I mean, obviously the book did that. Mike TV. Maybe I, no, Mike TV was terrible. So was Augustus Gloop. And then the, the blueberry girl, whose name is only is I'm forgetting. I don't know. Yeah, they were all just terrible, terrible kids. Um, so, yeah, I, I can't see how you would like any of them. Charlie was earnest. 
try to do what's right. I know that we live in a society today where we we want super flawed heroes, and everyone like, oh, we don't like Captain America, but I don't know. I just like having heroes that I can get behind. I'm not saying they never make a mistake. I just like anyway. Let's see here. Cosmos released a Christmas advent calendar. Huh, I didn't know that. I'll have to check it out. Do you have a fear of needles? I'm donating blood later and getting poked really bothers some people. Not really. I mean, I just don't think about it much. So when I give blood or whatever it is, you know, if they're giving me a shot or something, I just don't look at it and I don't think about it. I'm like, da, 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 ow, okay, and I'm done. I'm not, like, afraid of needles. I don't love them, but I don't know who does. That'd be weird. What percentage of games in the Dice Star Library are you able to pull out and play without looking at the directions? <sighs> It'd be very few because I always am like, uh, let's see how many cards you draw at the beginning of the game. I don't know how many games I could teach without reading the instructions. Obviously, most of the card games I could. Yeah, I don't know. I think I would look at the instructions, at least glance at a few things for many of them. But most of them, once I look at them, I'm like, yeah, I got it after the thing. But some, not all of them. What's the one board game you haven't ever played that would surprise people? Well, Star Wars Outer Rim, probably. Uh, da, 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 da. Well, let me look here, actually. I can just go to Board Game Geek, and uh, I can uh, browse games. So let's browse the most popular games and see which ones I haven't played. Blah, 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 So the highest ranked game I've never played is Kingdom Death Monster. That doesn't really surprise people, though, probably. Then On Mars, which probably doesn't surprise people either. Pax Pamir, which I will get around to playing at some point. Lisboa. Oh, that's four in the top 100 I haven't played. But I don't think any of those would surprise people. Let's keep going. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's actually... Do this by number of voters, because that'll be more interesting. So we'll, we're going to rank games by number of voters, and then we'll see the game that has the most voters that I haven't played, because that would be more interesting. Like, what's the game more people have played? So I played all these. Do 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 do. I'm just going to go down so I see one I haven't ranked yet. Okay, this is interesting. Okay, so the, first, the, the top 100 games that have the most people having played them, I played them all. Here it is. 102. It's Cards Against Humanity. I've never played Cards Against Humanity. So that wouldn't surprise people. Exploding Kittens I haven't played. That wouldn't surprise people either. Although I have played Exploding Minions, so I have technically played Exploding Kittens. Secret Hitler I have not played. Looking for a game I think that... let's. So we're down... So in the top 200, there's only three games I haven't played. Keep going. Rummy Cube. There you go. I think that would be it. We'll say Rummy Cube. I've never actually played Rummy Cube. I know a lot about how it plays. I've played a lot of games based on it. But I've actually never played Rummy Cube. So there you go. Interesting. So how many people have rated Rummy Cube on Board Game Geek? 13,947 of you have done it. The Grizzled I've never played. That's another one here on the list. I never got around to playing The Grizzled. I keep meaning to play it, but the other guys in the studio have played it so much that they talk about it more. Deep Sea Adventure from Oink I've not played. I've heard good things about that. Uh, in the Year of the Dragon, Labyrinth I've never played. But I know how Labyrinth is played, and I played games based on it. The Fox in the Forest I've never played. This two-player trick-taking game just never has come up. I've never played Lanterns. I played Lanterns the dice game, but I've not played Lanterns. Um, that's interesting, though. I've played almost every game that has more than 
10,000 rankings. Now we're down to games with less than 10,000 rankings. Uh, I never played the trick-taking game Wizard. I never played Pandemic Iberia. Navigador I've not played. All right. I'm feeling okay, though. I'm feeling like I've played most games that are popular. Um, so, yeah, I guess it's it's Rummy Cube would be my answer for that. Keep looking here. Or maybe Civilization might be another one. I never played the original Civilization. So, all right. Planning to do a board game themed gender reveal? I don't think I would do a gender reveal of, of a grandchild. I don't think that's done. I never did a gender reveal of any, oh, I, no, that's not true. But I just tell people. I, I've never kept it a secret. I always thought it was weird to keep it a secret. Um, I always told people, I, oh, it's a girl, 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 it's a girl. We did a video and I think it's, is it on the Dice Tower? I think it is. It's one of the earliest videos we ever I ever did. I think it's on the Dice Tower channel. But I, you know, that we were having a boy, you know, that was exciting. I got some negative feedback. People were like, oh, you know, you know, boys aren't better than girls. And we were like, no, but my girls were all excited too, because they've had a brother, you know, it was, it wasn't that it was a boy that we thought a boy was better than a girl. It was just like, hey, we already have six girls. It's nice to have a nice change of pace. That's all. It was a movie, Tom. Those other kids were more entertaining. No. No. Being... I'm going to have to make a wild guess. You're not a parent then. If you're a parent, bad kids that other people have irritate you. I mean, when I was a kid, I might, we'd get in the car and my father would be like, if that was my kid. I heard that so many times. And I've, I don't know that I say it out loud that much, but I definitely think it. When I'm around parents and their kid is being really bad, when I'm on the airplane and the kid behind me is kicking my seat and the, the, the parent next to him is not doing anything about it or whatever it might be, I don't know how that, I don't know, just not funny to me. Um, bad kids I've never found to be that humorous. but So maybe I'm just a killjoy in that regard. Let's see. Violet. Right. How could I forget it? Violet Beauregard. Beauregard. Um, turned into a... She turned Violet. Violet, you're turning Violet. Right. Weird. It's an odd one for me to have forgotten. What gaming con do you recommend for newer board gamers? Dice Tower Cruise, Dice Tower Retreat, Dice Tower East, Dice Tower West. Bam, 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 bam. And that's not the order necessarily. Come to a Dice Tower con if you've never... If you're a new board gaming... What's the best things to bring to a gaming con? If you come to one of our cons, you don't got to bring nothing. Well, you should bring clothes and soap. But you know what I mean? You don't need to bring board games. Now, if you go to other cons um, that that maybe like a Gen Con, bring money. Or you might want to bring your own games, possibly. Now, I don't want to say Dice Tower has the, the end-all, be-all. Uh, Geek Way to the West is pretty good for new gamers, too. Very good. I shouldn't say pretty good. UK Games Expo is probably good for new gamers. I don't think I would say BGG Con is good for new gamers. BGG Con is good if you're an experienced gamer. It's a great con. Maybe BGG family. I've never been there, but I would assume that would be a fantastic one. We've almost finished Pandemic Legacy Season 0. How do you, likely do you think it is they'll make another season? I think they're done. I could be wrong, but I think they're done. Is Dice Tower going to Origins this year? We're not. Actually, Origins is like the day after um, uh, the our Autumn Spectacular. Where is Origins being held? Same places as always is. Columbus, Ohio. What's your favorite to go-to food? Is taco salad.
Have you received the new Assassin's Creed game yet? I don't think so. When is the next top 10? I don't have one currently scheduled for this week, but we will be posting the one from Gen Con, so you have that to hold you over to our next top 10. Have you ever played Everdell yet? Yes, yes, I, you're right. I, I, you said I, I didn't play that for a while, but over the, uh, over the um, coronavirus lockdown, that's when I got it played. Yes, yeah, hoping to come back for Pain Act. Even my favorite games, I have to pull out the directions while playing, and they give me grief about it. No, I just that's that's crazy that people would think you can memorize every game. I think it's hilarious when I'm being taught a game by a designer sometimes, and I'll say, "What about this?" And they're like, "Hang on," I'm like, "What? You made the rule? <laughs> you should know it." Um, but they'll be like, "Well, maybe the publisher changed it. It's a legitimate thing." I just I'm just amused by it. How tall are you? I'm six foot four. Oh, well, I appreciate everyone who came by at Gen Con. That was fantastic. When you're playing a game for review, do you write down notes as you play? No, no, not particularly. Also, do you play with the same people as a control? That's not really a control for me. If I'm going to play the game multiple times, I actually prefer to play it with different people. Um, because it might have been the people, right? If Secret Hitler was called something else without Evil Incarnate in the title, would you have been more likely to play it? Sure. Um, there's, there's, so there was a couple things that, that, that turned me off from initially playing it. Um, one was the name, and two was the company who made it. The same folks who made Cards Against Humanity. Um, other than that, it just it just never came across my desk, really. And now it's been out for so long, and I I don't know. I, I'm I'm glad the name exists as a shock value, but I don't want to play games for shock value. I just like playing games because they're fun. What game have I been playing most this month? Well, this is the month of September. I know which game I played the most this month, and that's Magical Athlete. <laughs> Although, um, uh, so me and uh, the, the guys ran into Justin Gary at um, Gen Con. And then on the way home, because he was talking about um, Ascension, and I actually have the news. Well, actually, you can see the, the newest lid. Well, you can't see it here, but it's right up here. The newest... Uh, uh, Ascension copy, I says, ah, pull it out my iPad and play it, and I've been playing it pretty consistently since. You guessed correctly, I'm not a parent. <laughs> it just, look, sometimes there's, there's things that you just gotta laugh at. I just, I just, I don't know. Bad kids is one of those things that has always, that, that, that's not a trope I find super amusing. You said your wife makes meatballs, so how does Mimi's Blue Restaurant compare? Oh, well, they were better, for sure. I'm not, I said my wife makes meatball sandwiches and such, and that's, they're great and all, but that's more about the sauce and the sandwich and the, the toppings and things like that. Is Azul the Queen's Garden good? I don't know, but I did have a look at it at Gen Con. It looks very interesting. It looks similar to the third Azul, to, to a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to play it to see what I think of it. Will you be doing a 24-hour gaming marathon this winter? No, we're not doing those anymore. We're doing the Spectaculars instead. We feel like they scratched the same itch um, without killing us in the same thing. Uh, 24 hour marathons we just find to be exhausting. They're not tremendously fun. Uh, I know people like watching us get loopier and sillier as time goes by, but we would rather put out a really good product. And we think that the Spectaculars have done that. I think we've run, we've run a summer and a winter last year. And we've run a spring, summer this year. So we've done four so far. I think 
that they've gotten progressively better. You may disagree, and I know some people don't like them, but we've got a decent amount of response in them, and I find them to be a lot of fun. Can we suggest ideas for top 10 lists? You can always do that. The best way is to email me at tom at dicetower.com. I don't promise that we'll do a top 10, but I do stick them in a folder of top 10 ideas, and you never know when it might show up in the future. How do you recommend to teach an acrony? I would find someone else who knows how to play the game. <laughs> That's what I would do. Do people actually watch the 24-hour marathons for 24 hours? Not always. I mean, some people, I think, watched all the way through. I played coffee trays with five people last night. I don't think it's any slower than four players, to be honest. I just, I do not believe that that can be a literal truthful statement. Unless a game happens completely simultaneous, a game with five players is always longer than four because there's a fifth player taking a turn. Also, five-player games cause more interaction to happen, and I think that five players is a death knell for most Euro games. They, not all. There are some that work well with five. Now, if it worked well for you, fantastic. Um, and but the, the, there's 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 two main reasons I wouldn't play coffee trays with five. Time. That's actually the smaller reason. The bigger reason, board space. That game takes up so much space on table. Where's the fifth player going to sit? They have to sit at the end of the table or at a different table, I suppose. Um, you know, so many games you have a ton of stuff in front of you, and then you sit around the board. One, two, three, four at the corners. You add that fifth player, and it's just craziness, madness. Yes, we're just hanging the cover here, not the actual game. I think that after becoming a parent, I definitely feel more sympathy towards other parents when their their kids are acting off the rails. Sometimes there's no stopping it. Diff I have different feelings on that. Like when I'm on an airplane and there's a baby crying, I always feel terrible for the parent because there ain't nothing you can do about that baby crying. There's nothing. And I, I'll give that grace all the way up to maybe two years old. After two, though, you can stop it. You're like, well, they're just being cranky today. I have very cranky kids that I can look at and they go, mm. I can still be cranky, but not in public. Outright rebellious and jerky kids, that is a behavior that can be curbed by parents. Now, I do understand that there is exceptions to everything and there are special needs, children and things like that. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about kids and I've taught many kids. Um, and I, I remember when I was in college and I, and I had um, a first grader group and I was amazed at how viciously cruel and evil behavior I saw from some of those first grader kids that was clearly just allowed by their parents. Um, but this is not a parenting podcast, so we'll move on. Is there any chance you might host another werewolf game soon? Yes, I need to get on to that. Has WarioWare caught your attention? I don't know much about that, actually. Do you like musicals? I love musicals. Most musicals, not all musicals. Have you ever been to a good air show in Florida? Ah, uh, maybe once. I just never get around to going to them. I like this. I noticed that Duel of Ages 2 has fallen off your top 100. I am disappointed. Why? Besides the excuse, better games have come out. Again, remember, I'm currently doing a series, which I'll do again next uh, Tuesday, called Five More Great Games, where I talk about games that aren't in my top 100. People are always kind of like, oh, you, that game's not your top 100? Then it must be trash. <laughs> How is that possible? You know, um, I played some games this year that are clearly going into my top 100. Please, please invite Sam Healy over for a top 10 or spectacular. Okay. When you are all preparing for review videos, what does the daily, weekly schedule look like? 
So I come in on Mondays. I always unbox everything I got over the weekend first. I get that ready. I look at the schedule. I do a Q&A usually. Uh, and I do the Q&A at lunch. We do board game breakfast. Me and Mike work together on that. I often talk to everyone. Okay, here's what's going on this week. We're going to do this and that and this. I start recording reviews. Um, I try to get ahead. I try to have all my reviews done by Wednesday because on Thursday and Friday, I'm usually working on stuff for next week. There's always a convention to plan for. There's a Kickstarter to plan for. There's a Spectacular coming up that we need to plan for. There is lots of emails and things I need to work with. It's a, it's a never-ending amount of work. This, wheel, this week feels a little overwhelming for us because we just got back from two weeks where we were at conventions, and yet we still put up videos during that time, and people are expecting videos this week. So one of the ways we're going to fix that is we're going to be doing some live stuff this week. So in 30 minutes, we're playing World of Warcraft, Wrath of the Lich King, Pandemic Live. Um, it's a new game coming out from uh, Z-Man Games. It's based on Pandemic, and we hope that you enjoy that. And you will see a few other live things throughout the course of this week. So with that being said, I'm going to end my Q&A here. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day. I hope to see you all in 30 minutes. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and this has been Live Q&A on the Dice Tower.